Hi everyone, welcome. Ryan Coop here from the London Craftsman Channel. How's it all going? And in today's episode, we're going to be delving into the subject of the track saw squares. And in particular, the Banggood version, the £20 version. Yep, you heard that right. £20 for a track saw square. Unheard of, right? So that's tickled your taste buds. You want to find out more? You want to find out whether it's worth buying or not? Well, better stay tuned. Watch to the end. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so this video is going to be divided up into five sections. Firstly, price. So I'm going to be telling you how much it costs, including shipping, with or without shipping. Also comparing it against the competitors such as Festool and Woodpeckers, etc, etc. Secondly, I'm going to be talking about the specs, the fitment, the weight, the size, all those sort of bits and pieces. Thirdly, I'm going to be talking about the product itself, how it's made, how it feels, my opinion on that. Fourthly, I'm going to be doing some cuts. Obviously, that's the most important part. Um, I've had this for about two months now and I've not used it. I've clicked it on the track, but I've not checked it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, in real time, cut those components, check if it's square, see how it feels, if it needs any tweaks, if it needs any bits and pieces done to it, then I will do that along the way and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to be testing all the cuts against my trusty reference square, which I've had since I was an apprentice, for about 20 something years. I'm not using the Banggood versions because there's a bit of controversy about the squareness of them. They are all square, but just for the sake of the video, I'm going to be using my trusty solid stainless steel version. And lastly, but not least, I'm going to be evaluating the product itself. I'm going to be giving you my opinion and also going to be just saying whether I think it's worth buying or not. Also, stay tuned right to the end because I'm going to be showing you one amazing Banggood product that you should not miss before the prices go up. So definitely stay tuned for that. That'll be right at the end. But without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay, so here it is. And let's talk about the price first. This cost me £18.89. Um, I ordered a few bits and pieces with it, so I didn't get charged shipping charges. So if you order over £37, you shouldn't get charged £2 something shipping charges. Remember, that's to the UK. So £18.89 all in, which is... Pfft, Absolutely amazing considering it's a solid slab of machined, CNC machined aluminium. Let's talk about the competitors. So coming in at cheapest is the TSO at around £100. Vestal in at about £111. Bench Dogs about £125. And InstaRail around £140. Woodpeckers the most expensive in the UK um, at about £300 something. Pounds. Remember, I'm not comparing like for like. I'm comparing prices of a rail square. So if this does the job in cutting a nice square cut, then that is all that matters. Okay, so let's talk about the specs. Firstly, it's about 0.3 kilos heavy, um, or light, whatever you want to say. It is very light, um, machined aluminium. It fits Makita, Vestal, and Triton. I've not tried any of the others other than Makita, but that's what it says on the Bank of website. The size is 260 long by 88 by 8 mil. So it's not huge, it's quite small, and the products are solid aluminium, brushed finish, and stainless steel. Um, all of this slab is machined out of one section, and you've got these two T-bars that slide into your track. They are singly, they are fixed on via machined screws at the back, Allen keys, and so is the catch. So four components in total, the base plates, the two T-bars as such, and the catch itself. All right, so about the product, it feels nice and solid. Obviously, because it is CNC machined, I'm pretty sure it's going to be accurate. I can't imagine someone programming a CNC machine to cut out of square components. Um, everything looks really well made. The finish is outstanding, to be honest, um, even from the countersunk heads of the um, screws to the catch. I've tried it on the actual track itself, and it gets a nice tight pull looks quite robust. It looks like it's going to stand the test of time. Remember, all these components are adjustable. I think they have got these um, Allen key heads on them. So if they do, I'm sure there is flexibility in the way they fix on. So if it is out of square, this is where I'll start first with these two bars. And if the catch isn't tight enough, I'm sure I can release it from the top here, these two screws and pull the catch backwards. To adjust everything, it just simply is a two or a three mil, I think it's a three mil Allen key. 
and that is about it. It's got lots of different holes in it. I think that is just to reduce material that they give you to keep it lightweight. It also adds a little bit of character to it. I'm not sure if they do anything, you know, specific, especially these four holes. I'm not too sure on that. But I think we're time for testing. Okay, before I start, I just want to show you how to put it on. So firstly, you're going to have to slide this T-bar into this groove. This bar will slide up against the back edge. So simply slide it in like so. This bar will go up against the back of your track. I'm going to slide mine on a little bit, just to give it a little bit more sturdiness as I'm cutting. And you just simply clip it on. It's a nice firm click there. Um, if you want to cut right-handed, well, I'm, I'm assuming everyone who's cutting with their plunge saw is a right-handed saw, I think, isn't it? So you want the track saw square at the bottom of your track, not this way. Let me slide it up for you and show you why. So if I flipped it up there and I turn it around, because obviously we're working from the bottom here, and I slide it up, then my track saw is being placed in the wrong position. I'm going to have to cut downwards. So again, I'm going to say that once more. Flick that up, slide it all the way down to the other side, click it on, and that is the orientation that you want, I believe. There we go. So first things first, let's get the plunge in and give it a test. Before I start, let me just show you what I've got. Is my workpiece going to be cutting into a piece of 18mm MDF. I've got my um, CTS hose plugged into my saw and ultimately into my ultimate workbench. So when I turn my saw on, the extraction will turn on and sell the power, etc. So what I'm gonna do is just get that track in the right position and just go for a cut. Okay, remember what I said about having the square as far up to the center as possible. I'm gonna release it and just push it up a little bit further, just to give me a bit more stability. It does feel nice and solid on that track. I thought it did have a bit of a wobble before. It does have a very slight wobble where this goes into the channel, but I don't think it has any um, negative effect. So I'm going to take a bit of the weight um, of the track, and I'm going to use my left hand to guide that square into the right position. I'm just going to take off 10 mil roughly, nothing major, and just push the square up against the work, and just until it finds its natural position. Okay, so let's go for a cut. moment of truth really isn't it because a square is all about being square if it's not square what's the point so let's take that off cut off oh, i didn't cut all the way through never mind that won't affect the test and give it a test there we go we are out we are out by about three mil at the moment over about 500 mil. So we need to try and tweak that square. All right, guys, so for the looks of it, my microphone and my camera is just gone typical, just in the middle of shooting. So I'm going to have to just do this scene once more, and it's going to be with um, my camera microphone. So apologies for that. So what I've done is flip this over so I can get to the square at the bottom. I'm gonna just release these four screws once more and aim it down ever so slightly. Like so, just putting a bit of pressure downwards while I nip these back up. And what that's doing is just tweaking those T-bars that slide into the grooves. And um, let's just hope Let's just see if that does the job. So flipping it over once more. Let's do one more cut. I'm gonna simply push it up against my workpiece very softly, get my saw. Get my goggles on once more. Go for a cut. Okay, let's 
Let's see if that's done the trick. So, get rid of the off cart. Let's get the trusty old square. I think we're near enough there. We're very fractionally. I think we could do that once more just, just to get that a little bit better. We're about a quarter of a mil out of the top, but you know, we've got to aim for perfect, don't we? So, okay, let's just tweak that once more. Same way, we're just going to release those four and at the same time hold that so I know where it was and just a tiny bit more and you, you'll feel it move ever so slightly. There we go. I'm going to hold it there nice and tight with my right hand. Nip it up again. Every time I nip up, remember I've got the catch still on on the other side. So let's go for the third cut and see if that solves the problem. There we go, let's go for it. Okay, what do you reckon? Third time lucky. It's always the number, isn't it? Three times. Right, so let's do the test. Can you hear that sound? There we go, just perfect. Spot on. There we go, three times it took. Happy days. Yeah, really happy that we got it square in the end. Okay, so part five of the video, which is evaluation and my opinion. The question is, do I think you should buy this? And my answer is yes, 100%. What can you get for £20? Well, not even £20, is it? It's £18.89. Amazing. I'd snap it up. I snapped it up straight away as soon as I saw it. As soon as I even looked at it, I didn't even look at the description. I just saw Traxor Square, £18.89. I've just got to go for it. And for the sake of it, you know, a little bit of tweaking, 15 minutes of just calibrating the two bars. It, it's not a hardship. It's not the end of the world. Um, really simple, it fits three different tracks, the Triton, the Vestal and the Makita, as far as I know. Um, and yeah, it's a great bit of kit. Nice solid slab of aluminium, probably if you're buying that solid slab of aluminium on its own, it's going to cost you more than 20 quid. So there you go, that is my evaluation. Snap it up before the price goes up, as I always say, because they do fluctuate on Banggood. It goes up and goes down, a bit like these guys. You know, one, po one point they're about 120 quid, next minute they're 80 something quid. So, another one to buy. Um, as you can see, I'm addicted, I buy tons of them. Um, I've got tons more to come, I've probably got, got about 40 or 50 um, in the collection. So, yeah, addicted, addicted much. I did also say that I was going to mention one Banggood product that you shouldn't miss, and there it is at the top. Um, fantastic price, snap it up before the price goes up, really is a great deal. I've got one also which is going to be a video one day. So, so there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I love you and leave you, take it easy, have a good rest of the day. Ciao for now.